we just celebrated um, our 17th wedding an anniversary, but about seven years ago, um, I had lost a good friend to uh, suicide. Um, I had been diagnosed with a rare disease called um, trigeminal neuralgia. It's so rare that it hits like one in 30,000. In the same year, I lost um, connection with my sister and um, I was very wounded uh, by a friend. It was a, it was a hard year. Um, in the middle of that, um, little did I know that uh, my marriage was um, struggling as well. It was during that year, um, April of that year, that I got involved in uh, adultery, an extramarital affair, and uh, from there, and we, we, life just kind of crumbled. Um, I had to step out of uh, the job I was in, we stepped out of that job, and uh, that was working with a nonprofit. And so from the only work experience I had up to that point was law enforcement and military, and we stepped out and we had been serving in, in some ministry capacities. And so we were kind of uh, at a loss all around. So we were at a place where our marriage is falling apart. My wife was pregnant with our fifth child. We chose whether I walk away or stay that we would put ourselves in counseling. So we went to counseling. And about the third meeting, um, the pastor said, okay, Amanda, when you come back, I wanna know where you are, um, just so I'll know how to counsel you two and you separately. So um, I wrote in my journal that um, I said, God, would you harden my heart? I'm getting ready to, uh, leave Jason and you just need to be okay with that. Don't work on me. Don't ask me to do anything else. Like this is what I'm doing. So um, the next day was Bible study and um, I attended Bible study fellowship and we were wrapping up and hey, wait, everybody. I just need to ask you a question. If there's a decision that you're going to make today, who would it devastate? And I uh, wrote down our kids' names because remember that morning I said, I'm leaving Jason. God, don't do anything to stop me. So when our, uh, our situation initially came to light, um, there was a lot of like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try to convince what I've, um, they know, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you're trying to kind of hold on and like uh, save face, if you will, as far as just, well, let me just admit where where I'm wrong here. And uh, so we had gone to counseling a couple of times. And again, like I said, I was just angry and I was just, I was just mad and, and hateful. And I couldn't even understand why. And it, it was more to, to myself than anyone. And I had a, a very close pastor to us, the pastor we actually were under at that point. And Terrence told me, he said, you've got to determine if everything that you've taught about and everything that you've uh, sang about for the last five years is a total lie. And um, man, that wrecked me. I mean, it just hit me. That's where the Holy Spirit began to work in my heart. Because it was about two weeks there while we were walking through just the initial shock of everything and, and not really knowing what, what to do or what you're gonna do. And um, that statement, and uh, it, that's where the Holy Spirit began to use that to work in my heart because I knew the truth. And I knew that, I knew that Jesus was truth. At that moment, it's where it wasn't just um, clearing a guilty conscience, it was a confession of sin. It wasn't just like, I'm sorry, it was now I'm truly bringing this to surrender to the Lord. Because we had gone to counseling, right? That was in the afternoon, we got to counseling that, that evening, and that was where uh, I said, okay, I'm just laying it all on the table. Like, here's the things I'm still holding on to, which was like, just things. Just different things. Different I mean, things. you can't come forward. I remember for maybe months, Jason and I, we were repenting of everything because we wanted to bury this That's and true. move forward. And we could not move forward until everything was out. Clearly it's the gospel for someone to repent of that and then forgive that of such a sin to go from asking God to harden your heart to not that I can't imagine my life without him. I mean, that is God. That is the gospel. I wouldn't wish this on anybody. Um, the, the process was painful. 
uh, and the process was long uh, as far as just the restoration. Um, I had asked forgiveness from my wife, uh, other people, uh, other offended parties. It was a uh, um, very shameful experience. Uh, and, and even to this day, there's consequences that I carry from, from that one sin. There is a stigma, if you will, at times that I, that's not going to be out of people's minds. So that process and that fight back, the, the thing that resonates with me is the situation was horrible. The recovery was horrible. Um, the consequences were horrible and devastating. Uh, it's a miracle that we, we are here today and, and married. Um, but the thing that was produced in that is that I have nothing but Christ. Like that's, that's the thing that uh, walking away for that for me was every day I wake up that, every day I wake up the accuser's there to tell me my failure. He's there to say, you are this. Um, but it's a battle to say, no, that's not who I am, that's what I did.